another part of your physical media collection that you don't get too deep into is um, uh, paperback fiction. Yeah. Pulp fiction, if you will. And I remember one of your unboxing videos, you were talking about a series that I read a bunch of uh, in high school. And I wonder if you're still into it. I'm just going to show you my bookshelf here, see if this comes through. Check out all those executioner novels. Yep, there they are. <laughs> How many do you uh, have? I have, I think I have um, of just the original executioner, uh, not the Super Bowl ones. I think I have uh, 250, and I'm just trying to get the first 300. Like I said, before I started collecting, I set a hard line on what the cap will be. So, you know, so I don't get over the top because unlike some of this other stuff with, with physical media, I mean, you can see behind you, I mean, how much space some of this takes up paperback books, take up space. Oh, good Lord. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. That's a library in there. That's awesome. But I mean, you, you must know this with the books is like, those are heavy, you know, uh, they're susceptible to damage. Yeah. Uh, how do you maintain uh, a paperback collection without them rotting away? I don't know that you do. Uh, okay. I got a lot of them in bags and I need to do more work to get them in the little, you know, the little where they the like acid free poly bags and stuff. Yeah. Um, but as, I mean, this stuff, some of those executioner novels are 50 years old. They go back to like yeah. 1971, 1972 and, and their original printings and you look at them and you can just feel it starting to, like I better be very careful with this. They're brittle, you know, because right. they've just been in my attic for fifty years or whatever. The garage. Um, I don't know that you do. You just have to be careful. And yeah, I did a video about that, and I've read some of them. I sure haven't read as many as I've got because they're yeah. kind of, they're kind of all the same thing, you know. It's like yeah, it's a variation on a formula. Um, but I read them when I was in high school. I I read them. Uh, the later ones, because I was a big action movie fan and it was sort of like that same thing, but in, in books. And I think I just started collecting them now because I just want to revisit that fun I had in high school. And I don't know, I don't know that I'll get through all of them, but uh, uh, they're, they're not too hard to get a hold of. But yeah, I was just wondering, like, you know, is paperback fiction also a hobby of yours? Like if, if, if not this series, what paperback series do you like? I, I do love I mean, I'm a big reader. I read every day and I, I love pulp. I love old detective novels. I love sci-fi from the fifties to sixties. You know, here's something that I've not talked about at all anywhere, but I'm, it's, I've, I'm doing a lot of stuff digitally now because I just don't have room for things anymore. Like chasing some of the books that I want to read. Uh, I just like, I'm like, Oh, I can, I can download this for free from Amazon. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll do that. So I'm reading like, uh, what's the the amazing amazing stories magazine starting with the 20s and it's a short it's magazine you know magazine stories that they would run you know 10 pages or 15 pages and it's the compilations of the best of those i just read them on my i read them on my tablet right so yeah i have all this physical media stuff but i also really see the value of just having it in your hand so there's yeah. whatever works and it's cheap too. Some of that stuff's in the public domain. So it's really cheap. Oh. But I do. I love, I love, I mean, I'm a, I'm a nerd. We started this conversation by talking about what I'm interested in. I'm just a nerd. I like stories. I like space. I like action. I like, you know, cool detective stories and things like that. And there's more of it than I'll ever get to. Cause there's thousands of this, you know, the, you look at the, I know I have, the executioner novels, they're still doing them. I bought one a couple of years yeah. ago. It's number 500 and something. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I can't imagine what current executioner novels would be now. I think I'm, I have a fond memory of them because when I read them in high school, occasionally they would get like downright funny. Like I remember there's a scene in one where uh, Momar Gaddafi like shows up and he's like taking shots at him. <laughs> and it's just like, this is a real, real yeah. life dictator that you've turned into a character in the book and you're not even going to kill him off. I don't know. It was just like that like sort of just, cage movie. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very cartoony. But uh, yeah, I had to ask you that because that's just kind of a, a fun goofball topic. But if I buy um, another set, here's the next set that I may go for, but it's kind of expensive. And so I, and again, they might just crumble on my hands. But yeah, I would really like to get a run of the Edgar Rice Burroughs Tarzan stories. They printed them. They kept them in print for a long time and yeah. they're probably still in print. But there was a particular run in the 70s maybe into the eighties and they had the coolest covers. I think they're Frank Frazetta covers, which if you know that artist, it's like beautiful, like Conan kind of art, but it's Tarzan and they are gorgeous. And uh, to put, I think there's 24 of them and to put together a set of those, it's, it gets up there. I thought I'd won a complete set on eBay, but they didn't, they never, they never responded to me. They never sent them. And so I had to open a, a report on them. Um, Brutal, man. That sucks. Uh, have you come across any of the uh, the Dirty Harry paperbacks? I never see those. Never. Yeah, okay. I, I got my hands on a couple of those. That's one I'm actually very curious about. I just love that movie series, so I'm hoping yeah. that the the paperbacks are fun. But, uh, if I know yeah, we are... this, I could have also showed you um, the uh, there's a series of eight books about the Clint Eastwood character from the man with no name trilogy. The Sergio oh. Leone spaghetti Westerns There's an eight book series starts with, it's an adaptation of fistful of dollars and for a few dollars more than a good, the good, the bad and the ugly. And then there are five more that are original stories made it oh. like, in like 68, 69, 70. It's cool. Wow. Oh, those are, hard to those find are insanely hard to find and super expensive. Yeah. Set an eBay alert. That's the tip on this is just set an eBay alert. And yeah. uh, so if it shows up, you'll get an email. So, yeah, no, I think I might, cause that sounds awesome. Those are some of my absolute favorite movies. You know, when I, I, I like your movie content quite a bit too, cause you talk about so many spaghetti Westerns and, and that's yeah. something that I'm into. But uh, I have, I know now I have a spreadsheet. I'm running, <laughs> I'm running a Don Pendleton executioner book series. Uh, spreadsheet so that I can keep track of all the ones that I actually have. I printed out a, uh, it's not printed actually, it's just an Excel document with like all of the uh, the, the Don Pendleton, all the Mac Bolan books. Um, and then I'm just like going through them.